To get a wildcard certificate from Let's Encrypt, you have only one option. You need to pass the DNS01 challenge. When you send a certificate request, Let's Encrypt will ask you to prove that you control the DNS for your domain name by putting a specific value in a TXT record under that domain name. In the previous video, I explained how to get it manually and then use obtained certificate from Let's Encrypt in the Nginx server block. This video will focus on automation. Let's Encrypt certificates are only valid for 90 days. This requires you to renew them approximately every 60 days. Automation is the only viable option here. The way we automate this, we will delegate TXT DNS queries to our own DNS server. First, we will create Ubuntu server. We can use Nginx, Apache or any other web server. And we will install Acme DNS server there as well. When we request a certificate with servbot from Let's Encrypt, we outsource TXT DNS queries from our DNS hosting provider. It can be any provider. In my case, it is Google Domains to our DNS server. Acme DNS client will use REST API provided by the Acme DNS server to put correct TXT records. When Let's Encrypt verifies that the TXT record is present with the correct value, it will return a certificate to our servbot. Let's get started. Since we're going to be using AWS, I'll show you how to allocate the static public IP address and assign it to the EC2 instance. Other than that, this tutorial should be pretty generic. In AWS, if you create your EC2 instance, a virtual machine in a public subnet and allow AWS to assign a public IP address automatically. Whenever you stop or terminate that instance, AWS will release your IP address and most likely you will not be able to use it again. First, let's go to EC2 section and select Elastic IP. Click on Allocate Elastic IP Address. I'm going to keep the default region to US East 1 since I'm going to create EC2 instance out there. Then just for our convenience, let's give it a tag name equal to server. That's it, so simple, we got our static IP address, we will assign it to the virtual machine after creation. Go back to the EC2 dashboard and click Launch Instance. I would recommend watching how to secure Nginx with Let's Encrypt on Ubuntu 24 with Servbot video, where I explain why we use Ubuntu and how to install Nginx and a Servbot properly. Alright, search for Ubuntu and select Ubuntu 24 AMI image. Let's choose very tiny and cheap instance, preferably with at least two CPU cores. Here you need to place your instance in the public subnet, which has a default route to the Internet Gateway. Let's switch from private to public. If you're using default VPC, you probably have after assigned public IP enabled and you need to disable it since we will use Elastic IP. You can keep other default parameters in place. Then the storage, we get 8GB of SSD disk. It's up to you to increase or attach additional disks if your workload requires it. Tags are just labels, sometimes we use them for service discovery. In this video, we're not going to use them explicitly. Then the security group, which is a firewall in AWS for your instance. If you run Nginx, Apache or any other web server, you probably need ports 80 and 443 open. Let's do that first. Now we need to open standard port 53 for DNS. Keep in mind that DNS uses both UDP and TCP protocols. DNS uses TCP for zone transfer and UDP for name and queries either regular or reverse. UDP can be used to exchange small information, whereas TCP must be used to exchange information larger than 512 bytes. Let's open them as well. Also, you can restrict SSH access to only your public IP address to improve security. In the near future, I will create a tutorial on how to deploy deploy OpenVPN server to AWS and limit your SSH only to the OpenVPN security group. Optionally, we can remove IPv6 access. In general, 0000 indicates that any IPv4 can access your service, in our case EC2 instance. Now let's review and click launch. Here we need to either select existing key pair or create a new one. We have our virtual machine running, but it doesn't have a public IP address just yet. Let's go ahead and assign it. 
here we have two IP addresses, one for the internet gateway and the second one is for our EC2 code server. Let's select it and click associate elastic IP address. Select the instance ID and the private IP address. Later, this will be very important when we need to run our DNS server. We must bind the process to the public IP address. But the way it works in AWS, the public IP is statically nodded to the private IP by the Internet Gateway. The instance itself is unaware of the public IP address. Refresh the page to see that the EC2 instance now has a public IP address associated with it. The next step is to SSH to the Ubuntu, but first we need to fix permissions on the private key that we downloaded from AWS. Let's use Elastic IP from the console. You also need to use that private key and the default Ubuntu user. It's time to install some software. We're going to follow the standard Linux folder hierarchy. We're going to put application files to the op directory, then the configurations will go to etc and also we will create soft links to user local bin to be able to execute our binaries. First we need Acme DNS server. It is a simplified DNS server with the RESTful HTTP API to provide a simple way to automate Acme DNS challenges. Let's create a folder opt Acme DNS. Then let's change the directory to it. There is a shortcut that you can use. This will take the last argument of the previously executed command. If you go to tags in GitHub, you can find that we have precompiled packages that we can use. Let's get one for Linux AMD64. Now untar that archive file. Let's see what we have there. Redmi file, then the systemd service that we will use to run our DNS server, config, license and the binary. You even have the docker file that you can use to run the DNS server. Ok, let's clean up and remove the tar. Now we need to create a soft link from opt directory to user local bin to be able to run our command. Let's not run Acme DNS as a root, but create a minimal Linux user for it. Now let's run IP adder to see the network interfaces attached to the VM. We have a loopback interface and the second one with the private IP. You can see that we don't have direct access to the public IP address. In order to expose our DNS server to the world and let's encrypt, we need to bind it to the private IP address associated with the public IP. Usually you can run your software on all interfaces by using 0000 and expose it to the internet. But we have an internal systemd resolver running on port 53, so as a workaround we need to use that private IP. Let's see in AWS that we have the same private IP. Let's create etc acme dns folder just to follow the folder structure convention. And move the config out there. Now the most important part of the video, let's modify the config. As I mentioned here, we need to bind to public IP via AWS private one. Keep both UDP and TCP protocols, since we already opened a port for both of them. Here just use your own domain that you want to use for wildcard certificates. In my case, it will be devotesbyexample.io. Same for the zone name server. We will be responsible for resolving DNS for of devotesbyexample.io and not Google's name servers. Enter your email, use that instead of add symbol. Now the static records that your DNS server will return. First update devos by example.io and you need to use your actual public IP address here. Let's encrypt will resolve this IP to your DNS server. Final record here. You need to specify that auth devops by example.io DNS server will be responsible for resolving any DNS queries for star auth devops by example.io. This has nothing to do with the wildcard certificate. This is for DNS01 challenge only. Later, we will need to create a CNAME record. Now this DNS server has API that we will use to automate renewal. Since we will install the servbot and Acme client locally, we just need to expose it to the local host. 
port can be any arbitrary port greater than 1024. Let's use 8080. Otherwise, you would need to run as a root and probably it's not a good practice since those ports are reserved. Finally, we don't need a cert for the API since it will run on localhost. Let's check the systemd service. You can see the user and group that we created earlier. Let's move this file to the system folder and reload the systemd daemon. Now we can enable it that systemd will start our DNS every time after reboot. And finally, let's start it. You can run status to verify that you don't have any errors. Or since we're using a systemd service, we can use journal CTL, then the name of the service, AcmeDNS. Now we need to create a few DNS records. Your domain can be hosted anywhere. Mine is hosted with Google Domains. First, let's create auth a record that will point to our DNS server. Then create the NS record to outsource DNS queries for star of DevOps by example.io to our DNS server. Now let's split the script and test our DNS server. In the first tab, run journal CTL to see all incoming requests to our DNS server. Alright, first let's check the API DOS by example.io domain. This should be answered directly by Google and not our DNS. We don't have any records associated with API, it's just a test who will answer the DNS request. Let's run it. You can see that Google's name servers are present in the response. Now let's try API of DevOps by example.io. Here is our DNS server, and we can see from the log that it was answered by Acme DNS. Let's try arbitrary subdomain. It still will be answered by Acme DNS. Alright, we verify that our setup is working. Now it's time to set up Acme DNS client. It's Acme Let's Encrypt client for issuing TLS certificates through DNS validation. Create a folder first. Switch to that directory using the shortcut and download tar from the GitHub releases. We need to untar it and clean up. Let's create a soft link as well. Next, let's install the third bot using the Snap Package Manager. As always, create a soft link. Now let's create a new Acme DNS account for your domain and set it up. This has to be your domain for which you want to get Let's Encrypt wildcard certificate and the Acme DNS REST API. As you remember, we set it up to listen on port 8080. Let's run it and say yes to allow Acme DNS client to monitor CNAME records. Just to check for ourselves to verify that we created the correct CNAME record. Now it loops and waits for us to create a CNAME. Basically, it works this way. We know that if you want to get a wildcard certificate for DevOps by example.io, we need to pass a DNS 
DNS01 challenge. We need to create a specific TXT record to verify that we own our domain. Acme DNS client will set up a redirect from Acme challenge subdomain to random value of devops by example.io. Now when Let's Encrypt tries to validate the TXT record, it will be redirected by Google to our own Acme DNS server. In that way, we can automate renewal. Every time when we request a renewal, Acme DNS client will create a new TXT record and Let's Encrypt will verify it and issue a new certificate. Alright, let's go and create the last DNS record for the Acme challenge. A CNAME record is used to create an alias from one domain name to another domain name. Let's use the CNAME value from the output. Let's go back to the terminal. Acme DNS client should detect the new CNAME record and exit. Let's wait for it. Optionally, you can create a CAA record, but I will skip it. Let's go to our local machine and check the Acme Challenge subdomain. Here are two important records. First of all, the DNS query was answered by our Acme DNS server and the CNAME record as well. Finally, let's go back to the Ubuntu server and request a wildcard certificate with a servbot. We need to provide the manual flag, but it will not be manual since we specify the auth hook to delegate automation to the Acme DNS client. Also, I use test cert. When you verify that your automation is working, just remove that flag and you get a real one. The preferred challenge is DNS since that's the only one is supported for wildcard certificates. I have another video on how to get a wildcard certificate manually. It will give you more insight into the process. It's called how to get Let's Encrypt wildcard certificate. The final test. Let's run it. Enter the email for emergency notifications and agree with the term of service. Now the servbot is requesting the certificate. Congratulations, we got a wildcard certificate. Let's open it up to make sure that it's a wildcard. Yeah, it's a wildcard. Now test automatic renewal. Supply dry test, otherwise your bot will not attempt to renew since the cert is too fresh. It works as well. Success. That means that we only need to set up a cron job or a system CTL timer. Let's check locally. We can see every time when we request a cert, we automatically get a new TXT record. I'm planning to create a video on how to use systemd timers in the near future. When it's available, I put it in the description. Timers can also do some things that cron job cannot. For this video, let's stick with cron jobs. Let's run it every 12 hours. You need to remove test cert for real certificates, otherwise you'll get one from Let's Encrypt staging environment. Let's save it and you are set. This command will not try to get a new cert unless the certificate is close to expiration, usually 30 days. No renewals were attempted. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next video and let's connect on LinkedIn.